Okay, hello everyone. I'm Rafael Del Nero. Very welcome to uh, the Java Challenges talk. And uh, this is my friend Igor. He has around 20 years of experience as a Java engineer. And he's also a specialist uh, in Kafka and Raspberry Pi. So uh, you're very welcome, Igor, to be here. And you can go. Yeah, so nice to be here in, uh, in present again after a few years. So welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here. So as Rafael said, today we are going to do the Java challenges. And uh, the joke here is despite the it's up to 18, we are going to do the 19 in previous mode. So don't worry about the challenges. It's for all levels. The idea here is have fun. We put the question is a really, really hard level. So don't get afraid of the questions. We are going to try to be more uh, kind of an interact uh, interactive way. So we are going to explain kind of a way that you can answer the questions in your mobile. Don't worry, you don't need to download anything. You don't, don't need to log in and anything. And it's anonymous. But uh, you can put a nickname or a fake name. And on the end, we have a fun here because the person who gets most of the questions right, we can uh, we come can here on the stage and maybe take a selfie or something like that. Surprise prime. Yeah, it's a very Just a, nice prize. Yeah. <laughs> so we are going to divide half hour is going to be the right and going to be the left. And uh, you can follow us on social network. I believe that if you guys here, you already know about the Java challenges. But if you don't know, javachallenge.com. Rafael Donero is the creator of the Java Challenge. He's a Java champion. He's author of books. He, he, he wrote some books. And he has around uh, 15 years experience. So I'm going to, to show the Kahoo website. Yeah. So, uh, so you need to go on kahoo.it and use this number as a pin. If you, you can connect on the Wi-Fi here, of course. Yeah, you can just uh, use uh, the QR code. That should be good. And as Igor said, uh, you don't need to worry about uh, answering the right question because the, uh, what we want here is for you to learn the concepts because we're going deep from Java 8 to Java 19. We're going to explore some concepts we think it's very important for every Java developer. So that's what we're going to do, OK? Don't worry, it's just for fun. Yeah, so let's have fun then with the Java challenges. And uh, we're going to go uh, through some uh, little story here. So uh, since uh, 96 to uh, 2010, the JDK planets were orbiting around the sun. and in January 2010, the red giant obliterated sun, right? So our objective here, our mission is to explore the innermost planets so that uh, we can get the best uh, from Java, OK? So this is the first planet, JDK8. So uh, I'm going to give you a brief of the challenge first. So uh, on this Java challenge, you can see that we are creating a list. And we are using the peak, and limit, and for each methods in this stream. And I'm going to show you the alternatives. So let's see. OK, who thinks it's A here? B, C, and D. OK, so let's see the answer. Come on, Duke. So yeah, the answer is A. So why it's A? 
So streams have very important uh, concepts. So the first one is the intermediate operation methods. So those methods, they are only uh, executed when the terminal operation method is executed. So for example, in, in this uh, code, uh, whenever we have this terminal operation method, which is for each, uh, it could be also the collect method, uh, the intermediate operation methods will be executed. And uh, one very important concept here is that streams are lazy. This means that if we don't have a terminal operation method, nothing will happen here. So that's good for performance. Okay, another one from JDK 8. Uh, and as you can see here, we have this list uh, with A, B, C, and then we have a for each. So this is quite simple. So I'm gonna show you the alternatives. If everything is right now, you can answer on the mobile. Who registered and began? Okay, who think it's A? Who think it's B? C? And D? Okay, so let's see the answer. Nice, okay. So most of you got it right. That's awesome. So, yeah, as you can see here, in uh, a for each method in, in a lambda expression, uh, you know, Java is not fully functional. So if we try to change a variable um, within the lambda, we're gonna have a compilation error. But remember that if we use an object, we can change the object. So it's not fully functional. But anyway, in this case here, uh, remember that the variable, uh, when, we when we use a variable inside the lambda expression, if it is outside of the lambda expression, it has to be effectively final. With that, what does that mean? It means that they have to be final or effectively final, which means that they, the variable can't be changed. So, okay, let's go to the next one. So this is about modules. So you can see that one module is using each other here. So pay attention in this slide because you're gonna need the information of this slide to answer uh, to the challenge. So just pay attention. I'm gonna, okay, so uh, I think it's enough. So just pay attention that we have Breeze and Vulcan. We have uh, two classes and just the code inside each module. Okay, so we have the executor class from the RISA module and the, the Spock class. And notice that in the executor class, we are using a method via reflection. And we also have a public method. So uh, note, uh, pay attention on that and let's see the alternatives. Okay, who think it's A? Who think it's B? C? And D? Awesome, so let's see the answer then. Duke, come on. Okay, so the right answer is C. So why it's C? It's because we're trying to break encapsulation and with modules we have real encapsulation. So uh, you can see that actually the method attack is private 
And this would work if we weren't using modules. But uh, because we are using modules, we have real encapsulation. Therefore, we can't break uh, uh, encapsulation from a private uh, method or a private field. So that's why we have uh, this error. And this would work. The code from the, the previous slide would work if we had the opens clause. If we had the opens clause, we would be opening this package uh, to be used as a reflection, and we would be able to break encapsulation. The important concepts about modules is that you can create a lightweight application with Java, and that made much easier for uh, the, the Java architects to, uh, cr to create new features in Java, because with modules, uh, all the Java ecosystem, which, which was a huge monolith, was breaking down, and now it's much easier to add new features in Java, for example. So those are the main benefits of uh, modules. And that's why it took so long for them to introduce this feature. Okay, so let's go to the next planet. JDK 10. Okay, it's a short term version. So LTS version, which is basically a long term support version, and it's uh, longer supported by uh, the Java vendors like uh, Oracle or uh, Azul and many other companies. Okay, so this is uh, the challenge about the uh, type inference. And just gonna give, give you a brief of this challenge. There's a lot of code, but it's actually not so difficult, at least I think. Uh, so as you can see, we have, we are um, declaring a variable and this var is actually being uh, declared on the bottom. As you can see, it's an interface that just has a, a method and uh, you can see that we are passing a new value to a var. Does that work? Um, and then we are using a lambda expression and we are doing a crazy operation with uh, this array list. We are removing uh, an element there. So, okay, actually <laughs> there are a lot of uh, things happening here. So oh, let's see the, the alternatives. Who thinks it's A, B, and C, and D? Okay, it's very balanced, I like that. Okay, so let's call Duke, come on Duke. Okay, so it's B. So why it's B? Uh, so uh, since Java 10, uh, the, the, the Java maintainers, they decided to not create um, a keyword that would uh, cause a compilation error. So that's why, for example, we can use the name var var. So this is totally fine. This compiles and this is fine. And of course, this is not recommended because the name var doesn't mean anything. So we should put a meaningful name in our variables. And um, we are passing a new value to the var Dr. Lester. It's not recommended, but we can actually pass uh, a new value if it is cast, only if we cast this value with var there. And uh, in the lambda var modifier, you can see that 
we are uh, using a join. And yeah, there's no much secret there. It's just, we are just passing uh, this um, lambda expression to the var interface. And there, uh, there is a trick on the numbers dot remove. And that's because instead of removing the, um, the index, we are removing the element by the object. So you can notice that this integer dot value of, in the implementation of this method, it, it actually returns a new integer wrapper, which means that we are going to remove the object and not the index. So, OK, and so that's why it's B then. OK, so another short-term version, which is Java 12. JDK 13, JDK 14, 15. And on this one, we have the text blocks. And um, you can see that we have one string without text block. And the other one has text block. So why text blocks is important? Because it reduces the boilerplate code. So instead of doing this horrible thing in the first uh, string, we just use text block. So yeah, there's no a lot of secret here. So let's see the answers. Who think it's A? Okay. And B? C? And D? Okay, it's balanced as well. That's interesting. So let's call Duke. Come on, Duke. And this is very hard, by the way. This is very difficult. So what's happening here? is that in the strip method, so we are trying to substitute the percentage s, as you can see. But what's going on here is that we are concatenating strings. This means that we have many strings there. Therefore, the formatted method will only work for the last string, for, these, uh, for, for the last HTML. Therefore, look won't be substituted. So that's what's going on. And in the second one, what we are doing, what's happening is that when we use text block, we are uh, actually, we have one string. So that's the difference. So we're going to substitute the string successfully. So, and that's why it's not working. That's why in the, in the first statement, the, the substitution is not working. And Therefore, when we try to, when you compare the Jedi without text block, uh, when you compare with the equals method, it, it's going to be false because it didn't substitute. But here in the second line, notice that we are using the formatted again. And then we, we are able to substitute it because the string is concatenated already. So that's why. And then we compare with the Jedi with, Jedi, uh, with text block, and then they are going to be equals. They're going to be the same. Okay. So now my friend Igor is going to present the challenges. So we, who think here is so difficult? We think it's too much difficult. The questions. Really? 
That's a good question. And who is who here is working with uh, Java 8? Wow, Java 11. Yeah, the majority. Java 17. 17. Oh, there's a lot. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's good to know. So we achieved in the middle of the, the, the quiz. Uh, as I said in the beginning, it's for fun, no pressure. We anonymous, we don't care. It's just for you guys to learn and, and have fun. We have the, the board here to show the top, uh, top five persons. Uh, as I said, you can put any name. On the beginning, we show that you can use the Kahoo. Unfortunately, if, so, if, so, if you start now, you cannot join the, the quiz. But you can even try to answer mentally for fun and for learn. So the person that is willing, should we say? Should we not we say? We can say yes. Do you guys want us to say who is the top three or not? <laughs> so I'm sorry my spelling here, but it's Mark Host, something like that. Mark Horst. It's the first one. The second is S. And the third one is X7. And uh, Kit and Anais, Anais, maybe? It's, they are almost there. So yeah, anyway, as I said, don't worry. It's just for fun. So records, uh, Planet 16, yet another short term. So this question is about records. So here you need to try to understand what is a record, what's the benefits. So you need to be, uh, have a look on the line two here, more or less. We have a generic something. Then we have kind of a crazy construction. Then, uh, then on the on the main method we just done, do some prints. But you need to remember about the generic uh, about the records. It's a immutable. You you have the construction. So thinking about that. I'm going to show the alternatives. <laughs> and you guys should be able to answer on the mobile now. So, who believes is A? Who, B? All right, C. Fair play. D. No one is D? Okay. So, let's see the answer. Duke, can you show us the answer? How is Duke? So, yeah, the answer is C. But how? Why? So on the second line here, you can see that uh, we have a generic type, run record and generic. Then line three, it's the uh, compact form and kind of construction, so we don't have the parentheses and things like that. And then line nine, it's uh, not, serializ uh, not serializable. And then, yeah. So I can see the majority answer. One thing that I, I, I didn't say is, uh, we can have time for questions on the end. We can come back in all the questions or one by one and we can have questions. As I said, there is no right or wrong. We are not here for judging one. There is no silly question. We can try to answer everything. And as I said uh, on the beginning with Rafael, we created the questions and we tried to put like really hard level, despite it's open for everybody, doesn't matter your level. We put it really hard for make fun. And the idea here is just have fun and try to learn some. So again, on planet 16, parting matching. So here you, you need to be, there is something strange on line three. N need to be aware of that line or have a look around. Is it 11, Igor? Yeah, and then there is something on level, some, 
something on line 11. It, it's 11. There's I'm something sure. very weird there. You should make sure that you pay attention to this. So I'm going to show the alternatives. And you should be able to answer on mobile now. So who believes is A? Who believes is B? Uh, C. All right. D. Okay. And the others are. This is a bit hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, as I said, do for fun. Try to learn something. So yeah. let's see. Come on, Duke. Show us. Show us. That's the answer. Duke has always the answer. So the answer is letter D. So here, anyway, this question was really tricky. If you look on line three, it's a one and the letter L, not 11. This is kind of a tricky that you see on some Java, old uh, certification exams. I think they, Oracle, try to make it remove this. But uh, if you guys are old style and did like the Certification four or five or six, you guys are going to remember that we usually to see something like that. And of course, because it's a number and a letter, the, that thing is a string, so then comparator is false. So on line five, it's uh, out unboxing, so true becomes a Boolean. And then on line five, it's just a normal string, it's an object string, and then The two strings are different, so it's false. So it's three false, and then number f six, line six, is just a normal exception. So here, false, 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 and exception. Yes. And again, the one and L here is really tricky to see. You need pay attention is much details. Next one, we go for planet 17. It's a, another LTS, long-term support. So let's see this one, Sealed Pattern. Okay, so I can go on this one, Igor. So uh, this is about sealed classes. And uh, we can see that we have a sealed interface. We have a static non-sealed class, a record, a static inner class, and Then in the main method, we are doing some operations with a switch case. And you can see that we are using pattern matching as well. We are using pattern matching, which is nice because we don't need to cast class anymore and makes the code so much better, so much more concise. And those are the important points of this challenge. So let's see the alternatives. You should be able to answer on the mobile now. Okay, who think it's A? Who think it's B? 
and C and D. Okay, it's it's balanced as well. So let's see what Duke says. Okay, so you can notice here that in the first point, okay, we uh, we can only permit a class that is final sealed or non sealed. So those are the rules of a sealed interface or, or a sealed class. And yeah, so uh, this one is failing as well because we are implementing Captain, which is a sealed interface. And this one must be sealed, non-sealed or final. So if we had one of those uh, keywords there, it would work fine. Another thing that we can't do with a sealed class or sealed interface is to create anonymous inner class. So we can't do that. Therefore, this line will also not compile. And this is a concept about pattern matching. So you can see that the first nice thing here on pattern matching is that we don't need casting. So instead of doing the casting, we just declare the variable Saru, the variable uh, Captain and the variable Janeway, for example. And the nice thing with pattern matching is that, for example, with sealed class, we can only have uh, Captain, Saru, Spock, or Janeway. And the compiler is intelligent enough to not oblige us to use the default uh, statement here. So that makes the code more concise and better. Um, so this is a concept of uh, like uh, you notice that the label is dominated. What does that mean? It means that Captain uh, is is dominating the case uh, option because Captain is above Janeway. Therefore, it's impossible to reach to Janeway. It's gonna be always Captain because Janeway is a Captain. So that's why we're gonna have a compilation error. So uh, that's the concept. So why sealed classes are important? It's because it's uh, a design, uh, it's a code design feature, which means that you can control your code. You can, you can have more control in your, over your code by using uh, a sealed class or a sealed interface. And then you can say, okay, this interface I have will only permit Saro, Spock, and Janeway, and that's it. Um, so that helps you on your code design. You have more control. So that's why it's important. And you can also use the, the feature of pattern matching, so which enables you to not use the default. It's not necessary. Okay, so go back to Igor. So uh, we, can, uh, we, are, we have the last two questions here. We are going for Java 19, previous one. We can talk about virtual threads and structured currents. So uh, the top three boards so far, S is first. Who is S? <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't worry, you don't need to say it. On the end, Mark's horse, well, something like that, and X7, Kate's are the, the ones in the top. So it's up to then monola. Anyway, as I said, for fun. So Java Planet 19, absorbed by a red giant. So virtual threads. Who here knows what is virtual threads, how it works? The benefits of virtual threads? Well, you can think in virtual threads something that uh, maps. So when we usually to have platform threads that is a relation between one to one with the OS threads. Virtual threads, you don't have this relation, so it means that you can have hundreds or thousands or millions of virtual threads for one operational thread. And then, yeah, of course, you, get, you increase the, a little bit the throughput. It's based on if your uh, thread is go to I.O. stage or not. But you can parallelize, you can handle more things. So, for example, you can handle thousands or hundred thousands of requests per second. Imagine you have a Spring Boot application with a 
uh, web server. I spring boot application by default, start a Tomcat web server. The Tomcat by default have 200 threads. So if you have uh, 201 persons doing a request in a simple post get method, the last person is going to wait. One of the threads are free to use. Or you can, of course, create more threads. You have the limit of memory. So if you increase, 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 you're going to have an out of memory problem. So then they came with a reactive way to do it. That became, makes the code really nasty, let's say, difficult to read, difficult to understand, quite impossible to debug. So now with virtual threads, you can solve this problem. So the main benefits of the virtual threads is not when you're going to use it and how you're going to use it. It's going to be when the application itself implement for you. So imagine when Spring implement, implement the virtual threads and the Tomcat implements the virtual threads. So then you're going to use it, that, that controller in a transparent way, kind of a black box, but you're going to be able to handle 100,000 of requests per second in a simultaneous way. So this opening the scenarios for loads of things. Imagine you have thousands of sensors. They send, uh, I don't know, temperature information for me every second. I receive hundreds of thousands of information for different sensors per second. So currently, there is no way to handle this threshold. My application is not going to handle. So you end up using some protocols, MQTTP, or any other solutions, put in a Kafka, and then your application reads by default. But now that your application is able to handle that threshold, so you might not need a Q Q MQTTP. I'm not saying that this is the future, but I'm saying that it opens a possibility for a lot of things. And uh, I use the Spring as an example, but, uh, and Tomcat, but there is already better of Jetty. There is already better of uh, other frameworks, uh, Micronaut, Elendon, uh, Quarkus, and so on and so on. So, and the other point is my, uh, virtual threads are going for inside the database. They are going to inside the JDBC or R2 JDBC. So once you have the virtual threads inside the JDBC, inside the database, inside the, the server, inside the framework, so everything is going to be transferred for you. And you're going to have hundreds or thousands or millions of requests in a simultaneous way. Imagine the situation, for example, uh, uh, an online game or uh, something on TV that, uh, oh, you need to send an SMS or you need to go in this website. Millions of persons, thousands of persons trying to do the request in a simultaneous way. So you need to handle this, and this opens the door for this work. But OK, virtual threads. So here you need to think about online around line six, my hint here. So what's going to happen? Let's see the answers. And you should be able to answer on the mobile. All right. Who believes A? OK. Who believes B? Who believes C? And D? OK. All Where right. Let's you? see. Duki shows us the answer. Come on, Duke. Come on. Oh, nice. All right. So awesome. the, the answer is D. So the main point here is. As I said, on the, when I create executor new virtual threads, you have kind of the try with the, the browser code. And this guarantees that everything that is there is going to be executed in a, in a block. In a, he's not going to write anything after until this finish. So the last uh, uh, dot lines and the first dot lines never are going to be in the middle of this execution. And then. Structure currency, again, planet is 19. Also absorbed by the red giant again. So structure currency. So anyway, yeah, this is more big code here. So the main point here is, uh, let's see the, uh, the, the answers. But the main point here, you should be able to check the line 6 and the line 13. 
So, what is around these lines? Sorry, you should be able to answer the mobile now. All right, who believes A? B? C? And D? All right. Yeah, this one is a little bit challenging. <laughs> it's loads of codes. It's too much information. But uh, the main point here is, as I said, the line is 6 and 13. Uh, look, let's see the answer. All right, yeah. So on line 6 and 13 is the main thing. So here we are using uh, on line 6 is shut down successful. So this means that uh, everything that's inside that block, the first one that gets the answer, the other ones are going to be ignored. So the method get uh, A or get uh, the, the method who get uh, data, uh, McCoy has a delay. So the other is going to every answer first, so it means he, he writes data and he ignores the rest. And then on line 13, we have the shutdown on fail, means only it's going to stop if some fail or if it finishes everything. So in this case, I'm just doing a get, so it's not going to fail. So he prints everything. So then the answer is data, data. Okay. So that's it. So we did it kind of a everything from Java 8 to Java 19 or 18 plus 19 in previous mode. And uh, if you guys want, we can show the board on here. We have a special surprise. But uh, There's a gift, guys. So I'm going to give you a free book. So as I said, Rafael is the creator of Java Challenge. He's a Java champion. He's writer of book. And we have uh, some surprise. Yeah, so guys, you can uh, download the book for free. You can use the QR code, and then uh, you're going to see some Java challenges. It's the low hanging Java challenges, which will help you to master some important concepts from Java um, and will help you to create better codes and um, to get the certification if it is an objective you have. But the main goal of the Java challenges is to help you to be a better Java engineer so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Because sometimes I see that so many times, Java developers creating code that's totally unnecessary. Uh, they, for example, they bring encapsulation, they create getters and setters for everything. Uh, they, for example, when they are using Lombok, they're using the at data, they bring encapsulation. So uh, that's why it's so good to master the Java features, because if you know the Java features, you won't reinvent the wheel. You're going to use, OK, I know that in the, this collection class, I have, um, I can use a comparator, I can use comparable. So if you know those concepts, you're not going to reinvent the wheel. I did that uh, a lot, but uh, of course, once you get more experience, when, when it's, once you know more about Java, you won't do that anymore. So that's good. So feel free to get the book for free. I just want to come back here and show javachallenge.com. You can find us on social network, and you can uh, get the, all the challenges that we did today. It's on GitHub or Rafael GitHub. So go there, get the code, try to understand, run your ID, see the answers, and try to, to learn a little bit. Have fun. And yeah. if you guys have questions, we are going to stay here free to answer. I, I know we covered lots of questions, and it could be tricky. But uh, thank you for coming. Yeah, and uh, don't worry, if you didn't get the link, I'm going to send to you uh, on your email. So uh, if you get the book, you're going to receive the everything uh, by email. So don't worry about that. Thank so if you, you have guys. any questions, otherwise, thank Cheers. you so much. <laughs> ah, actually, before, the S, 
Who is S? Who is S? Once you came here, let's take the picture. Just if you want, it doesn't matter. <laughs> We can take a picture here with the S. Or if S is not here, X7. <laughs> oh. oh, nice. So let's have the picture. Yes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.